refer to Texas as Texas all the time. <laughs> true. You know what? It's a shoe fit. Right? <laughs> it's true. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. Fiore, are you there? We're live now. Fiore, welcome in. William, welcome. Um, I am so excited to be back in front of the screen, talking to good people, talking to friends. How has, man, the world has been on a roller coaster in the last two years. Lucy, we'll start with you. Tell me about, uh, are, are kids in school? Are they homeschool? What, what changes did you implement that will stay forever and ever? Tell me about your reintegration. Um, they are definitely, um, in school, <laughs> um, 100%. Um, what I learned is that I am probably not the best teacher for them. Um, but, but I'm glad we made it. Like yeah. I look at last year and I just go, we did that. And I think we should all be really proud of ourselves. Um, in fact, I think that's one reason why it's so hard, like, cause so many people, it's still really hard. And there are lots of like hot takes right now about, um, oh, we should have done this or it, you know, all this stuff. And Arm I think it's too soon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, I think it's too soon. I think a lot of us are still kind of like, don't judge how a people sort of deals with something yeah. they don't know how to deal with. Um, I. But anyway, I, I feel like these days, yay, they're in school. My kids are doing pretty good. Um, we had we had to have some math tutoring this year. Like, but man, we're going to the pool later. It's summer almost. Like, in fact, that's what I'm taking from the pandemic is I have relaxed a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. Is kind of how I feel. It's fine. It's going to be fine. That's what I we, came with. What about you, yeah, Brittany? We, yeah, tell us, Brittany. Yeah, tell us. Um, we, uh, same. My daughter's in school, and I was. I'm not a very good teacher. We found that out during the pandemic. It's, you know, it's it's. Um, and I thought, you know, it, it's just kindergarten, you know, and it won't be that big of a deal. Like pre-K kindergarten, um, it's still very difficult uh, because you know teachers train for that and they know how to reach kids and also when it's I think when it's your kid you know um they don't necessarily you know it's your mom so it's like ah eh, whatever you know <laughs> so, yeah. um and I, I remember I think the hardest part with with the virtual learning was that they didn't want you in the room and um so you know I would be like okay I'd get out of the room and then you know Edie would come back out and chase me out and I'd be like oh you gotta sit here um so uh hi but but um you know, so it, it was difficult. Um, I do appreciate the teachers in the school a lot more, you know, than I think I might have before um, the pandemic because I realized it's just, you know, they, they've worked their whole lives and trained to do this and they're skilled at it and they do a good job. Um, and I'm grateful for them. But yeah, we only have, uh, I think it's 15 days of school left. So, and it's summer. <laughs> right? Like, the, the best thing about summer is even parents get a summer. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be nice. I'm so tired of harassing children. Uh, I will not miss the car real. It's so much work to harass your children. <laughs> it's like, true. You're like, do I let you be a deviant and just totally go the way? Or do I, do I just ride you like a rented mule? It's so... That's right. That's right. Yeah, that is. The that is those are the questions. <laughs> that, yes, the number one thing parents deal with: should I should I let you be a deviant or should I ride you like a rented mule? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, we so we went the opposite way, and only Novin remains in school. The other three are now some are online school, which is was a really cool option for the school system. Who said like, hey, this actually takes some of the load off the school system, off the off the number of kids in the class. And yeah. for those people who really weren't, they were not benefiting from the social aspect. They didn't like the things that we think about as what you what you get from school. It wasn't really they weren't getting those things, and they really yeah. just want to pass the test, 
check the box, get the, and then go do the thing that they want to do. Yep. So that was cool. And then there are, so one child is in straight up homeschool. Two kids are in online. One is in person. I haven't sat down to have that meeting with Rachel to be like, now that we have all these, like, what do we do? <laughs> you were inspired by Brittany's Instagram to go and garden hard. And so there are Same. some. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about your garden then, Lucy. Oh, well, it's a baby garden right now. Um, but you want to talk about being inspired between Brittany and Brina? Yes. Yes. I'm oh, like, Brina. what? Yes. Henry. Yeah. I love looking at, but she's, she's a pro man. I'm still testing it out. I'm so, I'm so like, I love watching how much she grows and how great she is yeah. at it and all of her tips. I know. And also she makes terrariums. I'm just saying, I keep yeah. going. I know. So for Mother's Day, my husband asked me what I wanted and I said, Brittany, you know that really, there's a fancy nursery here in the Heights called Buchanan's and it's really just wonderful. And I was like, I was like a gift card to there so that I can go and be like, help me be the local planter, all the native plants, like, yes. So it's we, fun. it's, you know, it's that it's actually during COVID that I started really doing it. My mom always gardened it, but it was a gardener, but, um, you know, I, I was kind of spoiled. I could just get her stuff. You know, yeah. I didn't yeah. have to grow it. I just go to her house and she had a lot of property. So, I mean, she grew a ton. Um, but during COVID, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm just sitting at home. Um, and it's like, you know, it's been a lot of trial and error. Like Texas has a lot of bugs and yeah. I, I'm like, oh, I want to be organic. And you know, I, it's, it's a battle. It's so hard. We have so many bugs and they're huge. And they're then oh, some bugs. of them, like they're pretty and I don't want to kill them because I love them. I don't know how yeah. to describe it. Like last year, I have like a butterfly net. And after the monarchs were gone, I found a bunch of tomato hornworms. But my tomato plants were already like gone, you know? And so I was like, oh, oh so you're them. like, just well, let I didn't know, but they also eat eggplant and they are like any nightshade oh. plant. So they also eat peppers. So like <laughs> within like two days, I left them. They took out two more plants and I was like, oh, oops. And then, but I couldn't kill them because I just can't kill things. So no. my mom thinks I'm absolutely crazy, and I kept them in my butterfly tent and, <laughs> and let them pupate. <laughs> that is hilarious. So, Brittany, we've got a bucket of worms that we're doing the casings and everything in the garage. So once a week, my youngest goes in and digs around, in the, and we give them food. We give them our cast-off produce from the week and cover it back up yes. and stick them under a table. Oh, and I make the best stuff for your garden, too. Yeah, earth or worms are good for the garden, right? Yes. And their casings, how they break everything down and those things are real good to plant into inside into your soil, like to sift into your soil. Yeah. <gasps> this uh, is garden line with Brit and Lucy. Yes. Oh for sure. <laughs> yeah, we so Rachel grew up on like a peach orchard uh when she was younger. Her parents had acres and acres and acres of peaches. And so she definitely had, uh, they had a cow, they had some row crops, uh, nothing compared. To, so her sister is a crop scout in Eastern North Carolina and is in field after field after field all day. Uh, and she, she went ham. She's like, if this <laughs> pandemic thing, if this ever even remotely happens again, like I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm going to go hard. So if my, yep. there we go. So now her share window. All right. So she went full on. Oh, we might have lost Brittany. No, oh, I think she okay. just got. I think she just got frozen for a second. But she, that's a great like way to get frozen though. I know it's so much better than like, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she is. Look, I see her. Kind of moving. All right. It's all, so... it's all smart. <laughs> it's all smart. You were frozen in the smiliest, perfect picture, Brittany. It was so great. <laughs> yes. So much better.
better than when you get frozen in that like face. I know, I know. And then which, uh, oh man. See, I keep having Do you have a favorite face. Well, apparently they updated all the permissions. So I think, oh, I can't even. All right, what a bummer. Uh, I was trying to, so there we have one, two, three, four <laughs> foot raised bed planters now. Uh, oh. that, that have various types of, because we're going to, we're buying, there's an old sports bar that's going, that's, they're selling the whole thing lock, stock, and barrel. So we're gonna convert, I'm gonna take a sign and slap the word juice over sports and we're gonna just keep <laughs> we're gonna turn it into a juice bar. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, we're excited as a, the whole company is going down on Tuesday to tour it. It's like seventy five hundred square feet. It's four four stories. Oh, it's huge. Totally oh, huge. That's amazing. Out, outdoor music facility like part of the pro it's on a, it's on a whole acre they have an outdoor stage with huge oh, huge seating. so we're, we've already been looking at like bands that we want to bring in different acts oh now lucy's frozen let me make sure it's not my internet uh-oh oh no oh, oh you're back i'm back hi okay good Is your, how is your internet? Uh-oh. No, I'm the only one that's not frozen right now. Man, the internet just isn't what it used to be. Oh, I can hear your audio. Oh, you're alive again. Oh, there we go. I'm here. I am in a different window. <laughs> there we go. I removed Woo! frozen this <laughs> Oh, I was frozen that time? Yes. That's so funny. And so it, yes, it just kicked everybody out. You have like, like it was like. Oh, yeah, you're, you're frozen one one. You, the frozen one is like this. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> you were, you were like thinking Aww. about something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. The internet's back again. Yeah, there's, it's four, four stories. Yay. We're going to go like tradable card games on a floor um, where people can sit down and play board games. They can play uh, like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, cool. We're going to have a floor for like laser tag um, where EOB's going to like buy all the equipment and like EOB will be like all the revenue generated on his floor will like, so yeah oh that is so cool we are because the the thing that we hear through the grapevine around here is that family friendly entertainment like there's nowhere to take the kids oh yeah 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 then uh, that is such a smart move that sounds awesome so i just ordered um like four grand worth of japanese snacks and drinks so we're going to have like full on Asian market. It's going to, we're trying to turn as much of what we loved about doing anime conventions. We're going to yeah. bring that into the store and give people a place to like go hang out, chill, watch anime or watch the oh. game. It, it comes with like 60 TVs. Oh my God. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy? That is so wild. Yeah. So wow. I'm, I'm in. We're taking the whole company down there on Monday morning and we're going to go see it. Uh, everyone's like, I'm going to, if you've thought about doing, have you ever gone to the Gotham city market when you do a New York show? Yes. Yes, I have. That's okay. So cool. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Okay, so we're gonna have that like we're definitely we're accepting this kind of food and a lot of people kind of food and red food this kind of food. And Dan's gonna have Dan's Koba bar. Okay, we'll mix up Koba like like every you gonna come in and do um, all sorts of hipster restaurant um, kind of like they do in the Gotham market. We're really excited. Oh no, get it, pull your back. 
So that's, that's I don't, what's going to happen for, for Color World this year. Can you hear us, Brittany? Barely. <laughs> Barely. I know. It's it's low. It's super low in volume. I'm trying to hear it. I keep trying to mess with stuff. I am going to go in this other What do you think, Brittany? Are you still loose? Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm, walk I'm walking through my house. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe disconnecting my Wi-Fi to see if that will. I'm coming to a different place in here yeah. to see if it yeah. to see if it helps. Audio is great. Just, is it one of those days when Streamyard just like messes with you? Yeah, it's like. I mean, a lot more people use the internet now than they. Than they did ever did before. True that. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. put this here. I'm gonna get something real quick. Hang on. Uh, Do it. Hi everybody. This is so fun. This is my house. This is my dining room. <laughs> How long have you had that that set? Do you oh have my any gosh. Edits? So my grandma, my grandma gave me that set. So yes, I've had it for her. And that big top. The big tall bowl. Oh man, Brittany, do you have a set? Do you have a china set that's been passed down in your family? I I don't have one that was um, passed down. My I actually collected tea sets. Um, I mean, I stopped a few years ago when I had Edie because like I didn't have room for it and I was becoming a hoarder. Um, but I I have a lot of tea sets. Um, and I would go to like Round Top and antique places and get them. Like yeah. I've got a couple of tea sets that are like they have a hand stamp on them that are like made in occupied Japan from like World War II. And I've got some um, like, like collector sets, not ones that I actually use. I have some that I use that were, you know, but those are just like from Tivana. But I had this one set that was so neat and it was really, really old and it was my prized possession. And when we moved from our apartment into this house that we've rented and then bought, um, I didn't want the movers to take it because I was like, oh, they're gonna break it. They'll never, it'll, it's so priceless, right? So I got it all the way to the house and I dropped the box when I was unlocking no. the door. I'm not kidding. <laughs> no! <laughs> I, I only have one saucer and cup left and it was oh. like, no! Like it was hand painted <laughs> with like gold, like probably lead trim and yeah. yeah Disney. It was, that makes me so sad. at the front door. <laughs> wow, that's a, so where do you keep the last remaining cup and saucer? Uh, I keep those like in a little cabinet that I have with like <laughs> a, a little dish I got from my grandma and just a couple things, you know, yeah. just so like a, I have this dish that this girl gave me that was like her family's from Vietnam because I gave her a bunch of like baby things and it's like made out of rice and it's yeah. Yeah. So like we just cool things like that. But, um, but yeah, I used to collect teapot tea sets. Very cool. Oh, I love I, that. That's why I tell people I, I'm old, like on the inside. <laughs> I like the idea of getting out like the good china for, for holidays. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, do you have any, either of you have new traditions that came, that you started, that you're like, we're going to just keep doing this thing, new, new traditions that you have? Well, my family, um, my husband and mine's first date was on New Year's Eve. And I mean, New Year's Day. Sorry. Sorry, honey. Um, New Year's Day. And so every year on New Year's Day, we take our kids to House of Pies, which was where our first date was. And that is an every year thing. Just what we do. That's way cool. Yay. Do you get pie? Oh no. I mean, that's a good. Honey froze right there. Do you get pie? It's a great, yeah. It's a great froze. And she's like, that's a, that's a great like memory. I feel like we should save that for, oh no, she's back alive. Okay. So do they get, <laughs> do get pie? pie there? Yes. We all get yeah. pie and we eat all the good food. Like Brittany knows, like it's an institution here in House of Pies. Um, but when my husband and I went, obviously it was our first date. And we yeah. went for lunch and 
we spent the whole day together after that. Like you go to lunch because you're like, if this doesn't work out, I can bail. That was the plan? That you, the escape plan was planned up front? Oh man, rip the internet. I'm blaming StreamYard right now because it couldn't be all three of us. At first I was like, I'm driving, so it's that. But you're, you're freezing a lot too. Um, Am I really? Oh man, I'm like two seconds away on my end from cutting. I've got the hard line plugged in. I'm about to literally pull out my Wi-Fi. Uh, I think I'm going to shut off my Wi-Fi and see if this still works. Because I don't need Wi-Fi. Get Lola back. Get a beauty. <laughs> She comes sit in my lap if she wants. I wonder if I should just. All right, well, I'm back. back. So clearly, this requires. That's sad that it requires the Wi Fi. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I tried to get cute and take mine off the, the Wi Fi to see if uh, I could go to the straight up hard line. Your audio is good now. Though. I took mine off Wi-Fi and it helped. I mean, I mine's low. Yep. My I'm gonna audio. make. I'm gonna make sure everyone I, else is on a different. I can hear you guys, but I've got it all turned up as high as I can, and um. And you I'm still can't hear me. Audio. Disable. Can you still? Oh. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Oh. Yes, I can. I'm barely hearing everybody. Did I just get louder? Okay. No, you're still the same volume. Up. Okay. I'm going to make sure that no one else at Color World is on the same Wi Fi we're on. We're having some issues right now, so I'm going to just one more thing. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. We are definitely up against the internet at this point. I'm going to have, uh, can you all hear me still? Let's see. Did that get better? That, that sounds great. It sounds better? That sounds great. Oh, good. Okay. I can't hear you guys any louder, but I figured out a way to turn up mine. So it had like this setting on it that says automatically adjust microphone. And I had to turn okay. it off. <laughs> so let me, let me do that for me then too and see if that helps. Yeah, I couldn't, because everybody was super quiet, then I was like, it's it, like I'm supposed to be like holding the phone, you know, to my ear. Yeah, yeah. Like, that doesn't make sense. Does that help right there with me? I turned mine off as well. Does that help with the sound? It did get a little bit louder for you. Okay, well then I can even go further and turn that all the way up. All right, tell me if that is much better for hearing me. So that sounds like the same, but mine didn't adjust until I restarted it. Oh. Yeah, I had uh, to, re I had to um, restart to get the adjustment to work for some reason. Okay, well then I'm going to let you and Lucy. Okay. I will be right Yay. back. Hi. <laughs> I just keep, we're having mic, we're trying to figure out the mic. I just keep moving around my house. I think it's StreamYard because we're even losing Brad and like I, his internet's like awesome. I, I never lose him. So yeah. I, I think, so, you know, it's like one of those things like Source Connect, like that one day when you have that 15 minute session with Source Connect is when you have all the issues. It's totally true. It's totally true. Okay. How does that, 
That's work better. I'm way gonna, louder. I'm gonna get my 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 chair. Do it. Do it. <laughs> way louder. You're way louder. That's beautiful. Okay, I love good. It. I put it up to 200 and took off the auto. What a terrible. What a terrible oh upgrade. Yeah. What, oh are the, what a uh, weird default to like make you quiet. Yeah. Um, I think they're worried about feedback. Maybe so many people got like fancy microphones during, and maybe they're like trying to protect the like the pop. People's ears. Yeah. People <laughs> they have their gain all the way up. Like. Ah! Can, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, we're all moving again. The internet seems to work. Yeah. Um, I kicked everybody at Color World off this network and told them to go on the other one. So, with any luck. Okay. Um, man, now I forget. Well, let's just jump into Angel <laughs> Beats. Since yes, I can't remember. Angel Beats. Uh, okay, how much of the source material did you all have before you started recording, or do you just jump right in there and figure it out as you went? Oh, zero, yeah. zero percent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was such a serious anime. Brittany, when did you realize, did they, did they tell you you were the lead? Um, when I booked it, I actually came in and auditioned for that, for uh, Stephen Foster. But I at the time, I didn't really know what I was auditioning for. Like, they didn't uh, give a lot of backstory. Um, just showed, like, a little tiny scene. And it was the one where she first comes in. Um, when you see her the first time, and she's trying to shoot at Angel. Yeah. Um, and... I think she says something along the lines of like, oh yeah, you're dead. And just like, yeah. you know, shoot them. And, and <laughs> he's like, oh, what? what do, I don't understand what's going on. Like explain things. And she's like, shoot them. <laughs> so um, I think that was the what we auditioned with. And then um, I, I came in after that and got a little bit more ba uh, backstory. Yeah. Now, did they, did they ever tell you like, so when you say they gave you some backstory, like, are we talking like episode 13 backstory or are they like only enough to get through the next episode? Yeah, just to get through the next episode. I always kind of appreciate that um, because you, you are doing like cold, it's cold reading and it's, it's a, I, I feel like a lot of times with Chase Method, it's very much in the moment. Um, and I appreciate that it, I don't know any spoilers ahead of time. It kind of helps me be in the moment and, and have a more realistic reaction when it happens. Um, so no, we didn't know about her extremely tragic backstory. Um, I mean, we knew they were dead and they were in another dimension, but we didn't know that they were pretty much holding themselves back or why. Um, so uh, all of that kind of we found out as we went. And at first I was so excited. She was just so strong and independent. And it, she was definitely the first character I had ever played like that. It, mostly up until then I played children and, and she's a child, but, mm -hmm. but I had played uh, very young children. And so um, I was just so excited to be this fierce, you know, young yeah. woman. Uh, and then you find out just her terrible, tragic story and, and kind of why she is so brash. Yeah. They, I, I, I was completely lost. I was, we, Lucy and I were talking uh, in the warm ups. You know, I, uh, Yuzuru, like, we were on the same page. He didn't know why anyone was shooting at anybody. I didn't know why anybody was shooting at anybody. I asked before, I still didn't really know who we were shooting at. Um, and then they really did a marvelous job. Like for me, I never saw anyone coming. Is that the same? Lucy, what was your experience like in terms of finding out like what the story was about? I remember, um I similarly remember auditioning, um, and I remember when I when I came in to record, I was just told, "So this chick is a super cool chick. Um, she's super cool. She is a musician. This is her whole thing, and um, she has a couple of awesome bits. And then I don't know how to do this without any spoilers. No, nope, no spoilers, but." And, and that is what you get. <laughs> and when you watch the show, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally missed that. Like that first obliteration. I totally missed it. 
Yeah. I don't, maybe I was like making a smoothie and it, like the next thing I know, they're like replacing the lead. I was like, Yes, with Hillary Haig, who is hilarious. But yeah, and I mean, that's when you start, you know, I think that's one of the moments that you start going, wait, obliteration is acceptance of, like, acceptance of your situation, acceptance of what has happened to you means that you can move on to something else. It's not necessarily, I don't know, that's when I think you kind of start going, wait a minute, what does all this mean? Like, what does it really mean? And why are we fighting? What are we fighting against? You know? Yeah, Brittany, that was your character. Not only powerful is one thing, but her intelligence level is to the roof. Yeah. Like that moment oh, sorry. where she, the moment where she tells them, like she basically calls their bluff and they're like, oh crap. She knows everything we've been up to. Yeah. Um, that was really impressive. Uh, to me in terms of you just, you, you never really have the full scope of your character until it's like all in front of you. Yeah. And they definitely sort of, um, it, it's like they dump it all on you at one time. So for a long time, you don't, you don't kind of understand her motives. Um, and then it, 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 you know, pretty much, I think it's like episode seven to 11, you figure out real quick that um, she does, she knows a lot more than she, puts on that she does and then part of that is her i think protecting everyone else because she knows that why she's there and she is she she doesn't know if everyone else actually realizes that they that they're there for that reason and she wants to protect them um and because she couldn't protect other people uh, have you read the brothers karamazov Brittany? i know you're a big reader but that's kind of the deep okay so there is um, there is an outright explicit discussion of religion in the Brothers Karamazov. Be and Alyosha and Ivan are talking back and forth. And one of them is like the Christ type. And then the other one is, is like the rebel. And he says, you know, life is so unfair that while what, before I meet God, while I can still rebel, I want to rebel right now against this gross, awful, unjust system that we're all a part of. While I still have my wits about me, I want to rebel against this. And I that all came like flooding to me as I was watching Yuri. Like she she even says that at one point. Like literally, it's like talking about like now is the time. This is crap. I remember my old life. What a pile of heaping manure. And right now, while I have this gun in my hand, I'm going to fight with every bit of my being to protect these people who have probably been similarly done wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it was, it's sort of this thing of like, why do I need to accept and move on? Because it was unfair. I'm not ready to leave. I, I, I need mm -hmm. fairness in this reality before I can move anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's really neat. The, the whole show is super neat because it really does allude to the mysteries of, you know, because none of us really know what happens at the end. And I'm mean, not for sure. And uh, it, it right. sort of alludes to all those mysteries about how some people say, oh, you know, there's there's ghosts and it's the, the, the ones that couldn't move on or, or something like that. It, it all kind of uh, alludes to all those different theories that black humans have about the end um and it, and it puts it in this it, it, it's strange because it puts the, it in this like premise of like high school um which it, it which is really neat you know only anime you guys <laughs> yeah yeah true that true that um but but yeah it, it's it, it has very heavy subject matter i mean when people say oh i love this or i love canon or clanad or made in abyss i'm like oh so you like to cry <laughs> <laughs> you like to cry. <laughs> that is the truest statement. That is 100% right on. <laughs> You're like tragedy. Okay, got it. <laughs> the, the graduation was, that was hard, man. The graduation. I love, I love how serious they, they took it. Um, I love what they did. The whole Yuri and Angel um, conversation. Yeah. Like that was. 
That was beautiful. That's it gorgeous. Was. It was. Yeah. Um, did you? So the we never really get the sense of just like you know how long Yuri has been there. Um, it's the the whole like programming the software thing seemed to come really naturally to her, um, <laughs> which which makes me think like. She really, she's, she has been there in terms like being a leader. Um, I also didn't get the scope of how big um, the rebellion was until they all like gather in the gym after the shadow yeah. started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think all of that is just really good, subtle storytelling. Um, you know, like somebody, uh, Rachel's first editor, um, one of the things that helped her the most was show it, don't tell it. Mm. like don't take the uh, the boring time to like explain just show show the reader show the viewer what you're yeah. trying to tell them yeah um, yeah there's this may be in terms of anime that i've seen one that says more than it like it it shows you so much more than it says agree yeah i uh, definitely agree Brittany, did you have a sense for like how aware or how awake Yuri was? At what point did you realize that she's really known from the time she told told him to start shooting or she's gonna or he's gonna die? Like at what point did you catch on to that she, that she like was really kind of fully awake the whole time? I think that and I don't know why she's that not everybody knows their story, but she does. I don't know if maybe at one point she had the chance to move on and didn't, and that's how she ended up there. And I, I actually thought about that later because I was like, why does she know what happened to her? But not everyone does, um, or everyone else is blocking it out or something. And, and that's what I always thought that maybe she had been there, gone through the entire process. And then at the end been like, no, this isn't fair. Um, but I think that mm -hmm. in the moment when she's talking about her family, um, because she right before that goes into that she knows that everyone is you know has passed away um and and but i don't think up until that moment she alluded to it but i didn't know what she was alluding to in in the time um so i i, I think that was my i don't i'm trying to remember exactly because it has been a bit but i'm thinking it was like episode seven lucy what did you think of the music at like i didn't give a whole lot of Create it, you know, thinking about the angel beats until like every episode there was like a concert. What did you think of the the music aspect of the anime? I thought it was great. Um, and I was borderline bummed that we didn't get to try to sing it. <laughs> yeah. So is that someone like, else? Like, oh, that's just the original Japanese, right? They mm -hmm. didn't even attempt to dub yeah. the songs. Uh, which, I mean, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. In that case, they didn't. And the Japanese is exceptional. Um, yeah. But some of but some of our people are super good singers. And I would have liked, yeah. I, do, I do not include myself in that. Just, <laughs> But I, I'm like a character singer. Like I can kind of, as long as I can sing as a character, I yeah, okay. usually do it. Okay. I think you're fantastic. Um, <laughs> ah, you were so funny. Um, I, yes if y'all go back and there's like a um what was that it was like the hello kitty theme song that we did a long time ago and all of us girls like did some on it <laughs> really intense um anywho but i really i loved it i thought the music was really powerful i love how they used the music as um as a distraction for the whole student body like it was this um sort of disruptive thing and of course, for um, my character, it it was her path. It was her emotional pathway to acceptance, I guess, you know. Yeah. It was what ultimately, I like how they were like, don't play a ballad. That's going to bring everyone down. We need you to like pump it up. And she's like, okay. And then in the end, it was her sharing her own music and sort of that thing that made her like, uh, like she had sort of exercised something in yeah. her or grieved something out or yeah. some such thing, you know? I honestly, until you just said that, I didn't notice 
I, at the I, end when they were like, it was just the four or five of them singing. You totally could tell it was in Japanese. And I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> Why are these people singing English and then singing in Japanese? That's weird. But I hadn't, I hadn't realized that the rock concerts were not in English. Um, yeah, no, it's all in Japanese, Ibasawa, like all of them. Yeah. And, and they're awesome. I mean, you know. Yeah. But I re but I remember them being like, we don't have to worry about the songs. And oh. collectively as a dub as a like the production team were like, Oh, that makes it a lot easier. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh man. That's kind of a bummer. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> it's good music though. I it's I great. like yeah. It's great. It's really well done. Yeah. Uh okay. I'm trying to think. The, it's really, man, it's a, it's a shame that it's not longer, that there's so much going on with, um, Matushia is one of my favorite, like, they haul him onto the, onto the baseball field and he's like 250 and then like he comes back later in the anime and he's like 160 and ripped and you're like, um, TK, like, for some reason, like, Everyone else can be like that. Can't, that can't possibly be his name. They're like, oh, we call him TK. And we don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, like, but you know why? Like, Noda is like, like, why did? Why does everyone else's name so logical to you? And like, TK is, yeah. Um, Thank you, and the, anime. Right? <laughs> and no, the the NPCs. Like, I love how they call the other students NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, oh, that guy's just an epic. That was, <laughs> He's a non-playable character, you guys. That has yeah. to be. <laughs> I wonder how much of that is localization. Is somebody, like, taking the opportunity to be like, oh, I'm going there. Right. I'm, you know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. a, it's a commentary on, on real life, on, like, whether the degree to which you're awake and aware of, like, what other people are going through. I, I feel like this idea of the NPC is really just somebody who you go to school with every day and they have no interest in or intention of ever getting to know like you, the person. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it seemed to me like NPC was again, a really like more less is more kind of way to like, instead of saying all that, what I just said, they just simply called them an NPC. And if you were listening and you caught it, then it was like the light bulb went off. And if you didn't, you just like laughed about it. Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel like there's, I feel like if I went and I watched it again, there would be even more than I got the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Brittany, at what point did you like, did you watch it in real time or did you like see the fan reaction and go back or did you reach a moment in playing the character that you're like, I feel like I need to know all, like at what point did you get the whole story? I felt like I experienced it as I was doing it. Um, but there back then it took us quite a while to get, we did finally get a DVD, but I think it was like years later. Um, yeah. we ended up getting it. Um, yeah. And, uh, at the time, I honestly didn't have a DVD player. <laughs> so I just, I had like a TV from Goodwill. It was black and white. I play Mario Brothers. <laughs> um, so it, yeah, I didn't at the time have a way to watch it really. Um, but I do feel like I experienced it through voicing her. Um, yeah. And that, you know, I think that that was when I got to see most of the whole picture. Later on, I got to see it. Um, but it was many, many, many years later. Many years, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was it was neat. It was neat to see. We we had worked really hard on it. We had a lot of good moments. I, I distinctly remember um, trying to come up with, it was Stephen Foster and um, it, it, the engineer. Oh, my gosh. I'm forgetting, forgetting his name. He has a ponytail. And um, was uh, that, um, uh, what was his name? Um, John? No. Oh, you're talking about someone that you worked with? 
Yes, I'm trying to remember the the engineer's name because they kind of switched out a lot. Okay, they switched out a lot. Oh, was it his regular engineer? Um, he was all... No, it wasn't. But I thought it was John with the was it John? He had glasses and a ponytail. Duckworth. Yes, John Duckworth. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So we all would like get together and try to figure out because the uh, the Japanese translation had um, moments where we would say different battle fronts, but that doesn't really like play in English. So we were, I, we would have so much fun trying to come up with like, how do we make this funny? <laughs> how do we make this like a joke? Because it's not going to be a joke to anybody um, in our language, but we came up with barnacle battlefront. And yep. uh, yes. Different operations. Yeah. And, uh, we had a good time. It was really good memories for that. So was that not not in the original anime? Because that's totally in the English dub. Is that not in the original? It was, um, but it wasn't like necessarily barnacle something. That was just like us trying to make it funnier because they were play like it would be a play. It would be like like lunch battlefront, and we'd be like, "Well, that's right. gonna fall flat for an American audience." We're gonna be like, "What? I don't understand." So how do we make right. this? Um, and so we we had a lot of fun trying to come up with ways to make it funny to an American audience. Wow, I love, I love that. I love localization. I, I think mm -hmm. in terms of it's so hard in the licensing business to know like, okay, sure. This was big in Japan, but there's so many things as you can clearly tell operating under the surface of an anime that like how much of that will translate. And I think a lot of that, how much will translate is up to whoever's localizing the writers that are localizing it. So yeah. Yeah. Super cool, man. Um, I have the actor list pulled up, but I don't have the writer and, oh, I guess, no, credits by, no, man, that would have been really smart of me to pull that stuff up, uh, in the beginning. Uh, what's it like, uh, do you, do you have a warm feeling inside when somebody brings up Angel Beats, uh, after like all of, like after Rimuru and, um, uh, Man, I'm trying to think. Uh, Wendy Marvel obviously gets talked about a ton. Like, what is it like when someone's like, oh, an angel beats? She is special to me. She's, I've always said, like, for years, way too many years, that I want to cosplay as Yuri. Oh, yeah. That's like, she's my number one cosplay. Like, one day I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. Yes, girl. She holds a special place in my heart. She was the, the first, like, independent tough girl that I ever got to play. So it was, it was nice. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Lucy? What uh, what kind of place in your heart does Angel Beats have? Well, so I have. Um, I actually watched the entirety of Angel Beats years later because I think I've told you before. I took like a five year break from going to cons and stuff when my girls yep. were very little. Yeah. And when I came back, somebody brought me their DVD cover of Angel Beats to sign, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! I don't even remember my name in this." Right. Like I I need to go. So, but I was like, oh, anyway, I went back and watched it because fans were bringing me stuff to sign. And then I was like, oh, right, this show, you know? Yeah. Um, it was lovely. So I, there is a collection of shows that I look back on as a really, as a moment in time. Um, and I think Brittany might agree with me here. There was a time sort of an ADV films time and then there was the time after that. <laughs> yeah. And the ADV Films time is when I became a baby voice actor and then a grown-up voice actor. I mean, they that's where – and that show is one of those um, – it's one of – I almost want to say it's one of those trophies on the shelf of that time right. in my life, you know, like in my, in my heart. Yeah. And my work heart, you know, um, because it, it was the old ADV was where so many of us got our start and learned yeah. how to do this. And it was on shows like this with these directors, yeah. you know, and Steven's not directing anymore. You know, it, it's just different now. Um, things are different. Yeah. So. That's cool, though. Um, you know, to have that like period in your life where like everything was a little magical. That yes. Was, well, yeah. and you didn't know, like the yeah. internet was around for sure, but it was like anime news network. You would go to anime news network and that's where I went to be like, 
oh, people are going to review our work on the internet. Oh my God. Like, oh no. <laughs> but, I rem but it was, but it was also, you know, it still felt like we were doing anime yeah. in a tiny cosmos. Yeah. A very tiny cosmos. Is it, is it, um, it was super fun. You know, it was just kind of home base there for a while, I guess. It was small, you know. The stage is so much bigger. Do you feel that? Do you feel like how much bigger the stage is now? Um, I do. Than when do you, Brittany? Yeah. yeah. It is so much bigger. And it, it wasn't, it, it like, that's another thing that I explain a lot of times to people. But back in the ADV days, um, anime wasn't as, as big as it is now. It wasn't universally... Um, as universally accepted and loved it was a much smaller more niche audience um the audience were usually um uh, folks that were in their 30s and above that had been to japan and and been passionate about it and then kept that with them you know um i remember uh greg is talking about how it, him and chris used to get um like giant dvd laser discs in order to watch them and that he it was such an expensive habit to be addicted to because you had to have the giant disc player in order to yeah. watch them um and a lot of people i would I, I remember telling people what i did and they'd be like you did what like and they they did not understand at all they yeah. didn't understand there were different genres and that um they, like even i didn't understand before i started doing anime that like dbz was an anime um it just wasn't as big and now it's 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 universal people all over the world know anime and it's yeah. it's uh, mind-blowing it's beautiful Pretty. people that are my people that are my contemporaries like i meet at my kids school or whatever yeah so i have cr i have cred now because their kids watch our shows <laughs> yeah. right and so i'm like the cool mom on the pto <laughs> <laughs> That must be so awesome being a parent and then do it like doing this for, uh, I love Newt, Newton Pittman. Cause you know, Newton is full-time nurse and he says every now and then someone will be like, that, that guy's great fairy tale. Be like, be like charting somebody just got out, you know, I love it. I love it. So good. Uh, always a pleasure to see you too. I, Cannot wait to the next time we can break bread somewhere in America at some beautiful convention. Yes, that will be awesome. <laughs> For sure. Um, enjoy the rest of your days. I know Brittany, first block of Hangouts are May 13th. And then Lucy, as soon as I say goodbye here, I'm pretty sure they're waiting for you with someone. Yes. yes. Thank you so Thank you so much for thank you for the work, Angel Beats. I I did not know what I was getting into. I'd heard the name over and over again, uh, but it was a real pleasure to have the opportunity to sit down and watch. So thank you for what you do and what you add to the world through your storytelling. Thanks, Brad. Thank you all. It was so good to have this panel with you guys. Yes, you. have fun. Tell the family yes. hi. Yes. Hi, Matt. <laughs> hi, Matt. He was like, I, I feel like, don't put me on the thing. No. <laughs> no, 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 Matt. I will not let you get away. <laughs> I love oh, it. Hi, Edie, what's oh, Edie. Hi. All right, good to see everybody. We will see you again soon. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>